It's the alarm that sends shivers down a parent's spine. An amber alert, the universal sound that signals big trouble for a small child. You talk about time being of the essence. Is there information that says we have this long after a child might be abducted? For those children who are abducted by strangers and who ultimately are murdered due to the abduction are dead within three hours of the abduction. So it's critically important we get that information quickly. Captain Jay Bart, commander of the Emergency Notification and Tactical Alert Centre, gives me a first-hand demonstration of how quickly his people can take over every freeway sign and communication system across the state to get the word out. A child has been abducted. This enables us to, to target the audience, so to speak, uh, to give the correct information to the right people. Since the Amber Alert started, close to 800 children have been rescued and returned home safely. But there is one who is always at the forefront of Captain Bart's mind, the Amber who started it all. It's a reminder for us every day when we do this, when we activate Amber Alerts, uh, uh, Amber's name is on it. This is Amber Hageman, the little girl whose face has launched thousands of alerts around the country. The last thing I told Amber was, you know, you stay with your little brother and you'll come right back. Donna Williams is still haunted by the day her nine-year-old Amber went missing. She was riding her bicycle. She turns around. She says, okay, mommy, I love you. And that was the last I heard her voice. Now, most of America knows this Amber as the guardian angel of kidnapped kids. When Amber was first abducted, the call to action was in the neighborhood where she was taken from. And there was a large patrol canvas that was done going house to house. Tragically, there was no alert to save Amber on that cold January afternoon in 1996 when she pedalled around the corner with her little brother following behind her. Seven minutes later, she was gone. He, she was nowhere to be found. How often do you allow yourself, Ricky, to think about what happened that day? Is it on your mind still? Every day, every day. Especially when I'm by myself, it's, it's kind of haunting. What does go through your mind? It's like a nightmare. It just keeps replaying over and over in my head. And I just kind of hope I can, you know, go back in time and change things, but I can't, so. By all accounts, this was very much a crime of opportunity. Police say the killer, a white or Hispanic man in his mid-twenties, spotted Amber riding her bike through this parking lot and acted on impulse. The single witness reported hearing screams as she was bundled into a black pickup. Amber's little brother came back alone and Amber's mother desperately tried to find her. I went towards where she was abducted, screaming, hoping that she would hear me and that she would come home. But no, she was gone. Investigators immediately launched a massive round-the-clock search. I don't recall the department ever having a case that was so involved with the resources, the time and energy that was spent on investigating this case. The enormous police search team worked feverishly for four days before their efforts ended here, when a man walking his dog discovered Amber's naked body abandoned in this creek. There was a heavy rain the night before, so there was water in it when she was found. She'd only been dead for roughly 48 hours, meaning for two long days she'd been held captive and tortured by her killer. The rain may have washed Amber down from where her killer dumped her body and tragically destroyed much of the forensic evidence. Even after police positively identified Amber, her mother could not accept her little girl was really gone. I didn't want to believe it. It's not my little girl. I want to see my little girl. What you went through in those four days, the, the wait and the not knowing and the anguish just would have been interminable. I still kept going towards where she was abducted at, screaming her name. And Amber's little brother, only five years old at the time, now barely remembers the day he lost his big sister, but says the pain never goes away. Is this you guys together? Yeah. She used to look after you, Ricky, right? All the time. You can, you can even see it here. I mean, I was so young. 
I knew she was gone, but I didn't know why. I didn't very much understand it. But I just knew a bad man took my sister. You were riding with her? Yes. That day you guys were riding through the parking lot. Can you remember someone pulling up? What do you, what do you remember happened? We were supposed to go around the block, and, and I was scared to get in trouble. And I said, let's go back. And I took off. And then from the time I got to the house, my grandfather asked me where, where was my sister. And we went back to get her, and she was gone that fast. Do you still see, you know, some of her friends around town from time to time? Do you stay in touch with any of them? Mostly on social media, Facebook, like that. I see pictures of, you know, the kids and whatnot. When Donna was finally able to see her little girl, Amber's tiny body was too fragile for her embrace. They told me one thing I can't do was pick her up and hold her like a mom with her child because she was almost decapitated. Donna, I'm so sorry. And I miss that. I wanted, to, I wanted to hold her, but you know, I got to hold her little hands and, and told her, you know, it's okay. Mommy's here now, it's okay. <laughs> it's now been 20 years since Amber disappeared and even though her namesake alerts have helped save countless other children, there's still no justice for Amber. Her killer has never been found. Even today, I hand these reward posters out to anybody and everybody that would take one. I really, really want her to have justice. She deserves it. I'm not going to give up. And neither will police. There is still an active investigation in Arlington, Texas, that's followed more than 7,000 leads. Every day, investigators are hoping the next one will lead them to Amber's killer. Okay, get on it. This could be the guy next door. It could be somebody that's already in prison. It is our belief that he has intimate knowledge of where she was taken, he either lived or worked in that area, and where she was found, because it was not an easy place to put a child. The terrifying thing is that this monster is still out there. This guy, he stole her life from her. He stole her from me, and uh, he tortured her. He, he, br he brutally butchered my little girl, and I want him caught. I want him behind bars. I, I don't want him here on this earth. What has this person taken from your family? My best friend. Yeah, she was my best friend. Nine months after Amber's disappearance, Texas broadcasters teamed up with law enforcement to develop the early warning system to help find abducted children. In 2003, former President George W. Bush signed it into law. 20 years later, her memory lives on. Behind me, fresh flowers and teddy bears. And this, a beautiful monument donated by a local welder for the little girl now known as Arlington's Angel. Since the first Amber Alert was issued in 1996, the public plea for help has evolved into an important crime-fighting tool. Amber Alerts are broadcast on news programs, billboards, mobile phones, and now on social media. My heart goes out to the Hagerman family. Uh, nothing can bring back their daughter, but uh, they're a part of every successful recovery we've had in California. And Amber's mother says every time a kidnapped child is brought home safely, she sees her beautiful little girl smile. When I hear the Amber Alert and I hear the child is back reunited to their parents, you know, I look up to heaven and, and say, oh, you did it again, baby girl. And given everything Donna has had to go through, it really is, well, quite remarkable what she has been able to do for child safety in this country. And, of course, the more people who pay attention to Amber Alerts means more eyes, more ears to help law enforcement find missing children. You can make sure you get these Amber Alerts on your mobile device by simply going to Settings and then making sure that Government Alerts are switched on. You can also help by following Amber Alerts on Twitter and also liking the Amber Alert page on Facebook.